Now let's look at two special type of resistors. We'll call it open and short circuits. I'm sure you heard of that terminology. And let's say the symbol for an open circuit looks like this. Open circuit, our symbol. And we have a current I in this direction. And then we have the voltage and polarities of plus and minus shown here. And we'll symbolize the short circuit as follows. Is a short. So we have I going in this direction and a V similar to what we did earlier with the open. So this is our open short circuit and this is a short circuit. Now let's look at the IV characteristics associated with this. Okay, we'll draw I in the vertical axis and then the V. And we note that there is basically no current. Current is equal to zero no matter how much voltage I apply to this. So here, let me tr choose a different color. We'll put red. Okay, so basically we have no current no matter what voltage we apply. Alright, and the slope of this line, the slope we know is 1 over R. But the slope actually is 0, which implies that R, the resistance, is equal to infinity, a very large number. You see, no matter what voltage I apply here, there's no way that the current can go through this device, which implies that the resistance is infinity, which also implies that the current is equal to zero. Now the voltage is equal to IR, but that just says that we can't use this relationship because this is really undefined in this case. So the voltage here, because it doesn't matter what the voltage here, there's not going to be any current. Now let's do the same thing associated with the short circuit. We're going to use the IV characteristics of I and V. And we have current going through here. But the voltage, since this jacks like a piece of wire, there's really no voltage drop across here because there's no resistance. So here, the current could be almost any value, and the voltage will always be zero. So in this case, we'll draw another red line right here. The voltage is zero. So whenever you have a short circuit, the voltage across a short is zero, which is just a piece of wire. Therefore, the resistance implies a zero. But we'll see that in this slope, the slope again is equal to 1 over R. But the slope in here is really infinite. infinite. So infinite slope, which is equal to 1 over R, which means R is equal to zero. So the resistance is zero, which implies that the voltage is zero. So hopefully that gives you a description for these two simple devices, the open and short circuit, and see what the corresponding IV characteristics are associated with it. Okay, let's look at an example called an analog switch. And basically it's an important device that's used in analog to digital interfaces. Here we have two different versions, one that is normally open and one is called normally closed. That is, it's normally open when there's no applied voltage through this gate. When we do apply a voltage through this gate, then this closes. And therefore we can go from point A to point B. Say from here to here. So we can connect basically circuits between A and B. 
Here we have one that's normally closed. So when we don't apply a voltage, it's closed. And when we do apply a voltage, then this will open. So here are analog switches for normally open and normally closed. We can take these concepts, these two, and combine it as a double throw model such that when we do apply a voltage, one switch is on and the other is off. So in this case, the upper branch here, when we do apply a voltage, this will close and then the bottom will open. This is known as a 2 to 1 multiplexer. So when we do apply voltage, we're connecting this input voltage, let's say A, to this connection here at C when we apply a voltage here. And when it's normally uh, in normal operation without any applied voltage, then B is normally connected to C. When we do apply a voltage, then we connect A to C. Again, this is a double throw model, and this is known as a 2 to 1 multiplexer. Now, sometimes switches are not ideal for analog switches. So what we do and when we have here is uh, a model for this analog switch in which we have a finite off resistance. And when it's off we want to remember for open switch is infinite. So although uh, in a non-ideal case the off resistance is very high 10 to the 9 to 10 to the 11th ohms. And then on the other hand, when a switch is closed, there is a finite resistance. So when it's normally closed, it acts like a short circuit, which has very little resistance. For the non-ideal case, R on is 20 to 200 ohms. So this is just an application of what we use practically to interface between analog and digital circuits using simple basic models and the models we're using is basically a open switch and a closed switch.